right, it looks like everything worked. Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, and it is Saturday, June 1st. I can't believe it's freaking June. Um, 1 p.m. Eastern time, which means it's time for us to go live and hang out. It has been a while since we've had a live show. Um, I can only apologize so much, but uh, it is the busy time of the year, and I have been traveling, shooting, doing a ton of things. Um, and the Saturdays I have been home, I've kind of just slept and tried to catch up. But I've missed you guys. We're back. So we're having a live show today. It's good to be back. I can't wait to hang out with you guys. So I'm glad you're here. If it's your first time uh, on the channel or hanging out live, that's even better. Uh, welcome, of course. We're going to hang out a little bit today and we're going to take a look at a, uh, a cool little tripod system um, that has been sent to me that uh, I, I'm going to take a look at with you guys today. Something I think is going to be really, really useful. But before we dive in, of course, this is a live show. So the beauty of live is that you guys get to hang out and chat and converse with me. So let me go ahead and pull that up here. There we go. If you take a peek there, we can actually get our live chat up here on the screen. So as you guys are commenting, I will see it and we'll be able to hang out, ask questions and do whatever uh, during the stream here. Because like I said, that's the beauty of live. We've already got somebody in here. Let's see what we're saying. Timeless Town. Great to see you, Bart. Welcome back on your own stream. Yeah, it has, uh, it has been a while, guys. I'm sure a lot of you were probably wondering where I disappeared to. But if you follow me on any other social media platform, uh, you know, Discord, I'm on there, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, Instagram, I've been trying to let you guys know uh, what I've been up to and I've been working a lot. But we're back. I'm going to try and, uh, and get us back into this live show swing. And we're going to start right now today by taking a look at something pretty cool, which is the platypod. Now, the platypod is something you may or may not have heard of before. Let's take a look at this whole system. Um, it, it's not necessarily new. Oh, of course my overhead camera starts glitching out. See, that's the danger of uh, taking some, uh, you know, a month off and then trying to put everything back together. Well, hopefully that thing hangs in there. But anyway, the, uh, the platypod is not necessarily new. It's been out for a few years, um, but I never had a chance to take a look at it. And while I was at NAB, I actually got to meet um, Noah, who was the inventor of the platypod system. We talked a little bit, hung out a little bit at the Aperture dinner, actually. Um, and he said he wanted to send some stuff out for me to take a look at. And I'm really glad he did, because uh, I can see these uh, being very useful to me very quickly. While I haven't had the chance to take them out into the field yet, I do have a trip coming up. I'm actually leaving again on Tuesday. And so I'm sure one, if not both of these, are going to be in my bag. So if you guys have any uh, questions or anything along the way, please make sure to pop it into the chat. I'll be, uh, I'll be taking a peek. I've got everything up here um, and trying to keep pace. Uh, let's see what we've got. We've got Bill Pan. June it is. Yes, I can't believe it's freaking June. Um, and uh, Timeless Town is Rumani from, uh, from Discord. Good to see you, man. Uh, we've been uh, chatting back and forth on Discord. It's always good to hang out and, uh, and, uh, and chat with you, even when we're not doing live. And if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, I have a Discord chat server, and uh, there's a link down below. So, um, and GDGD says hi. Hi to you. But anyway, we're not here to just hang out and shoot the breeze the entire time. We do want to take a look at the platypod. So let's take a look at what we've got here, what Noah sent over to me. Uh, let's hope this overhead camera <laughs> hangs in there. It was glitching out on me just before we went live. But anyway, so we've got three things here from the, uh, the platypod family. Um, and this is basically the base model. This is what's called the platypod ultra. Then there's a larger version here called the Platypod Max, and we'll take a look at both of these. Um, and then they also sent over the Platypod, or Platypod, I'm, I'm going to fumble saying that so many times, multi-accessory kit. So this is a separate thing that adds a couple accessories uh, that you can use with these different Platypod systems. But what is the Platypod? Uh, as you probably saw in my, uh, in my thumbnail for this, uh, it's a tripod but it doesn't have any legs. So basically what it is, it's a camera support system that's super stable, super versatile, super portable, 
um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can use it. But they call it a tripod because it's a mounting plate system for your camera, but it doesn't actually have legs, at least not in its native sort of format. Uh, and we'll get into that as we look at some of the accessories here. But let's go to that, uh, that overhead there. Let's take a look at the original here, which is the Platypod Ultra. So I have opened these up, I have played with them, but for the purpose of the video, I wanted you guys to see it's actually extremely nice uh, packaging, little magnetic uh, clasp here to hold it. But let's go ahead and open it up. And here you can actually see uh, the Platypod Ultra itself. And so here it is. Essentially what it is, is it's a metal plate. Uh, they say it's uh, aluminum and, uh, and titanium. I think the plate is aluminum. Uh, fully and some of the accessories are titanium, but it's a plate here It's got a whole bunch of different holes and cutouts and mounting points and all that It's very well made and it's very very lightweight, but it's also super super strong uh, So let's see if we can take a look at the side angle here real quick Pull up camera two, please So here we go guys if you take a look at this, you can see it's got all of these mounting holes all over it, some threaded, some not, and they actually have handy little, uh, little markers and indicators for what each of those mounting points are. And then right here in the center, this is capped off, but right here there is a 3 8 inch thread uh, that is attached to it right there. It's actually built into it, as you can see. Uh, you know, there's a little sign of where they put it in there, but it is built completely into it, nice and rock solid. And that is going to be where you attach whatever you're going to be mounting your camera to. So this plate, the theory is, this plate sits on a surface and then you attach something like a ball head so I have a big one here. This is a Manfrotto uh, 496. Uh, so you don't have to use one this beefy. It depends on your camera system. But you would just thread that. Let's see if camera two has a better angle on this. There we go. You would just thread that onto that 3 8 Make sure not to cross thread it there, Bart. Get it nice and snug. And now you have a stable platform upon which to mount a camera or even uh, other accessories. Uh, they showcase it uh, with like flashes and lights and, and whatever else. Um, and so there you go. Simple enough, right? So what's so special about it? It's just a metal plate. Well, let's take a closer look at this plate and exactly what does make it special. So let's take this off of here right now and let's just look at it at itself. Let's see what we got going on in the chat. Uh, Bill Pan is saying, uh, the last BTS episode was absolutely great. Do you plan to make more BTS videos? Um, yeah, so what he's referring to, before we get into this, what he's referring to is uh, I've started since I've been working so much. You guys really only see me down here in this studio doing these live shows or doing reviews and whatnot. Um, but the reality is I spend very little of my time actually down here in this set. Um, I travel, I go out there and shoot, I'm a full-time DP, I have my company, I work for another company, uh, and I'm trying to show you guys a little bit more of what real life is like on set. Um, and so I was able to, in a production we did over Memorial Weekend, do some behind the scenes, do a lighting breakdown and all that. I'll put a link in the description down below, but you can also find that on my channel, of course. Um, and yes, the answer is I do plan on making more of that content. Um, sometimes the clients aren't okay with behind the scenes footage going out there. Um, other times uh, we're in a real crunch for time and we got to get in and get out and so shooting behind the scenes stuff kind of gets in the way and can come across a little unprofessional sometimes if I'm there doing like YouTube talking to a camera type stuff. But we are going to try and do more of it, I promise. I really enjoyed doing it, I really enjoyed making it and it's had some good response so I think we're going to try and do a lot more of that. Um, let's see here. Furwork says it looks like it should have a bottle opener on it as well. Uh, Noah, if you ever see this, that is a great idea, a bottle opener. But anyway, let's take a look at what it does have. So if we take a look at this plate here, uh, you can see it's got a whole bunch of different cutouts. Let me actually zoom in so we can get a bit of a closer look at this guy. Set our focus. There we go. 
So here you can see the Platypod Ultra up close. So it's got all these cutouts, all these holes. Like I said, some threaded, some not. Uh, let's go through what we've got here. So they've got one, two, three, four, five threaded holes here. Um, and these are marked with their little spiked feet. So this actually does come with this little pouch here. This comes with the Ultra. And if you open it up, it has these little feet in it. And if you take a look at them, they're, I believe, uh, quarter 20 threaded. Um, I believe that's what that thread is. But they have a spike on one end here, and they have a rubberized end over here. And then they have a sort of locking little ring right here. And there's four of these in this pouch. And so what you can do is you can insert these and thread them through into these holes. Any of these holes, all of those holes, only the ones up, oh, there it goes, any of the ones that you need or don't need or whatever. Um, and then you can elevate this. You can use it on rough terrain if you use the spikes. Uh, if you want to use it on furniture, you can uh, use, uh, or, fried, or sensitive surfaces, you can use this right here. The rubber side, so those guys just thread in like that. So I've got the rubberized side down, and then the little locking nut, I'll get it in there. If I take a second one, let's just do it here just to give this thing. So I'm on an even surface here, so it won't make much of a difference, but if you did have an uneven surface, you could lay this on there um, and it would level it out, but for me right here, it just sort of puts it at a slant there. So if we take a peek, um, there you go. You can see we've got the spikes here. We've got the rubberized here. Um, but say we had, you know, pretend this was like a rock or something and you're out and you just need to set up a time lapse and get your camera on there. There you go. You've got that right there. Like I said, there are five of those holes. There's two here, two here, and one here. And they are all marked with a, a little graphic of these spiked feet. So let's go back to our top down. Uh, so let's, uh, let's continue going along there. I'll pull these out. And the Ultra does come with uh, that little carrying pouch that I have right here, this little guy, which is kind of nice. And in addition, slide those guys right in there, spin these up, get them in there, close it up nice and Velcro. And actually also in here, it came with a little carabiner. So with this carabiner, you can actually clip it and carry this guy attached to this, which is nice. But we'll take a look at that in a second. Let's continue going through the mounting holes. So speaking of that carabiner right here, it has two sections and one up here that are actually marked with a carabiner. So you can take a carabiner and clip right through there. I don't know if you'd ever really just want to hang this from something, but you have the option to do so, or you can just travel with it like that. So those are clips for carabiners right there. Then we have two right here that are not threaded, but are sort of uh, beveled out. And they actually have pictures of drills next to them. So if you had a surface that you could drill this to to secure it, you could put two screws in here and screw this down to whatever you want. Say you had um, a panel up against like a wall or something, like a beam that you were allowed to drill into. You could pop this on there, zzz, drill it in, and you have a nice secure plate where you can mount any accessories that you can adapt and add on to here. Really hope that overhead camera holds out. I don't know why it's being glitchy on me. Please, please, please. Um, and then we have in the middle here two of your standard tripod uh, plate threads. So you've got a quarter 20 and you've got a 3 8 So potentially you could even take this and thread a, uh, a, a tripod uh, plate onto the bottom of it and attach this to a tripod um, and use it like that. And actually, there's a third uh, drilling point down here. So I know that's a lot, but that's the versatility of this thing is that you can pretty much find any way to mount it. And I just realized looking at it, I completely even skipped over one of the coolest ones. So let's dive back in and take a look at that. So the one that I forgot is these right here. And so what these little cutouts are for, come on camera, 
what these little cutouts are for is it comes with a strap. And so this strap, let's go to camera one and I'll undo this strap here. So this strap comes with the Platypod Ultra. Take it out, it's got a couple of D-rings, it's got some Velcro on the back. And so what you can do is wrap this around a tree, loop it through these right here. Say I wanna wrap it around a post or something like that. Take that, run it through my D-rings. I'm probably not gonna do this actually properly, but anyway, you know, you can get it rigged up and there you go. It's gonna be nice and tight and secure. And so you can wrap it around uh, a tree, a lamp post, a fence post, whatever you want, and also secure it uh, right there. And then of course, with any ball head or whatever you've got, put that on there. Now you've got a camera platform, you're ready to go. So let's take a peek at our chat real quick. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything that came with the, uh, the Ultra. Oh, sorry, I'm just zooming out our overhead here. Let's take a peek at our chat here. Uh, do, 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 do. Howdy. Next, next live video, you ask me what my next live video will be? We'll get to that. Um, I'll talk about that towards the end there. But anyway, we've got the, um, so that's, that's it for the Ultra. So that's what comes in the, uh, the Platypod Ultra system. Now, here's the interesting and really cool thing about this, is that this is just a metal plate. So you might be wondering, okay, what is the weight capacity of it? Well, really the weight capacity is dependent upon your mounting system that you put on it. So if you put on like a heavy duty ball head like this, it can obviously hold a lot more. What the real thing is, is you need to look at uh, sort of how stable it is. So this has a kind of a smaller footprint. Let me take this uh, off of here. So this has a kind of smaller footprint, right? So it's perfectly portable, super lightweight. You can toss this into a backpack, you're good to go. I would say for stuff like, uh, you know, DSLRs, DSLMs, mirrorless cameras, I hate saying DSLM, um, but all of that, GoPros, uh, small lights, whatever you need, you can mount to this. And there, it's got enough surface area on the bottom that it's not going to kind of tip if you were just sort of setting it. Obviously, if you have it really anchored to something, you know, drilled into something, it's definitely not a problem. Um, but what if you have something that's a little bit larger? What if you're putting a camera on there and you're gonna have like a telephoto lens and you're worried that it might get a little bit, the center of gravity might get a little bit too far out and this thing might tip on you? Um, well, they have an option for that as well. And let me just push this guy out of the way for right now. And that option is the Platypod Max. So this is the same thing, but this is the big daddy size. So let's take a look at what is in the Platypod Max. I'm gonna put that little uh, thread cap cover back on that guy, because I do not want to lose that. So here is the Platypod Max. Let me make sure we've got our focus reset. Ding. All right, so here is the Max. <laughs> now, as you can see, the Max is definitely a lot larger than, uh, than the Ultra. So this is a big base plate. Still very lightweight, uh, still super sturdy uh, aluminum, but still very lightweight. Would not complain too much about throwing this into a bag. Uh, but let's take a look, uh, let's see what else comes with this guy. So there's it, actually this one comes with a nice carrying bag, very soft, very nice, big enough to transport that guy in. And that's actually it in this case, because some of the other accessories are actually built into it. Let's get that bag out of the way. So here we go, we've got the Max, let's do a little zoom in here, let's get our Focus going there. Okay, so here's the Max. Put it next to the Ultra. You can see much larger footprint, going to be much more stable if you have larger cameras or if you have lights and stuff like that on there. Very, very cool. Now, it's got the same kind of deal. It's got mounting points for the feet. It's got one, two, three, four, five. There's actually a little male to male quarter 20 adapter pre-installed in this one, so you can use that for whatever you may need. 
Oh, still getting little glitches with that. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it has the two mounting holes for drilling it to something here. It's got two carabiner marked holes right here so that you can go through. And then it's got the two tripod ones here. It's got your 3 8 uh, plate or 3 8 uh, thread right there to mount uh, your ball head or whatever you want to it. And then right here are the slots to run a strap through, which is pretty cool. Now, there's something really cool about this guy in that it does also have feet, but as you can see, those feet are built in. So they have this little attachment here on the front, and it actually magnetically holds the feet. So they go in, they have a little slot, and there's little magnets that hold them in place in here. Now, this is great, but you're like, uh, maybe I want that thing out of the way. Guess what? It just click, click, it click locks into place so it can easily be removed if it's getting in your way. But if you want to keep it uh, so you don't lose these and have to search around in that bag or whatever, just click, click, you're good to go for travel. There you go. That is the Platypod Max. So like I said, they don't really rate these in terms of weight capacity because the weight capacity is really whatever type of head or, or attachment you put on top of it but rather it's just the the footprint of it is larger so if you have larger items you're probably going to be better off with the max um, so I, I had a, in the thumbnail you'll see I even have the, uh, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K um, set up with a, a big heavy cinema lens and I had that guy set up on the Max and it was absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, let's see here. Let's see what our chat says. Uh, Trevor, hey, good to see you, man. Uh, says, I like the idea of this plate, but honestly, I'm way too nervous about my expensive camera to hang things creatively uh, like that. Yeah, so... Yeah, strapping it to stuff, um, you're going to want to make sure. This one's actually pretty good because if you look, let me show you from the top. If you look here, there's no, uh, there's no cutout like to the outside. Uh, so if you run the strap through here, this thing's not going to slip off no matter which way you mount it. If you use the Ultra, you want to make sure that you have this up towards the top. Uh, so if you mount it to a post, you want this at the top, you want this down to the bottom if you're using the strap. Uh, because that way, as it pulls down, there's no way, it's not going to fall off of the strap. If you mounted it like upside down like this in the strap, there's a tenant or a possibility it could whoop, slip out. Uh, so, you know, make sure you mount it properly. Um, but yeah, it's up to you uh, how comfortable you are. But I mean, I have a feeling this is going to be pretty darn secure. Um, and I'm going to throw them in my bag as I go on trips and see different ways that I can do it. But even, even just having it as a stand, like I want to get a quick time lapse, but I don't want to bust out a travel tripod and all this stuff or whatever. I could find a rock uh, nearby or a railing or something like that. You know, put the feet in, set it on there, get my time lapse, pack it up and get out. And this thing is like, this thing's smaller than my wallet. Um, I mean, I do have a big wallet, I need to fix that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's freaking awesome. This guy obviously is a little bit bigger. You know, I'm not going to be slipping this necessarily into my pocket, um, but still easy enough to shove into a backpack, which is pretty cool. Um, I do want to take a look real quick before we get into the accessories and do some sample mounting. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the pricing is on these. I do have links to them down below if you guys want to check them out. I think this guy's like 50 bucks for the Ultra, and I think the Max is 100 but I want to double check that. So give me a sec here. I'm going to pull up their website. Do, do, do. Yeah, so the max is $99, and the ultra, and I'll show you guys this in just a sec. I just want to confirm. It's $59. So you're looking at $60, uh, you know, $60 for the ultra. You're looking at $100 for the max. Okay. Um, and let me show you guys real quick just their, uh, their website. If you do want additional information, sorry, you guys are going to get a little bit of inception mode here. Um, 
main screen. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so you should be able to see this now, but it, it, this is just their website. Um, real simple list of products. You know, you've got the Max here. Uh, you can see all sorts of videos, all sorts of mounting options and how people have used it. Really cool. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. The footprint of the Max on that. Um, and then the Ultra. There's the Ultra with the... Uh, so you, see, this is what I'm talking about, about doing that time lapse sort of thing. So they've got it. You just pop those little legs on there. They've got it on top of a rock and you're good to go. Um, so lots of stuff there. Really, really cool little uh, solution. Uh, really ingenious. But anyway, let's get back to our regular. Okay, so there we go. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I had blanked on the price. Uh, didn't even think about it. So let's take a peek here. Um, do, do, do. Furwork says, uh, I like that they managed to store the spikes on, uh, on board on the Max better than the little bag and carabiner on the Ultra. Yeah, it is pretty nice that the Max has the little built-in thing for the feet. Um, but uh, I will show you also with the, uh, the upcoming uh, the accessory kit, it has uh, a little bag in it that makes sort of carrying the Ultra and all of its little accessories a little bit easier. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second. Um, Trevor says, uh, if they could add some attach attachments like a suction clamp and longer straps, uh, could easily be rigged for a roof or a hood mount on a car. Yeah, that is a good point. There is something that helps a little bit with that in the accessory kit, and we'll get to that in a second. But nothing that's an actual suction cup, um, nothing that's an actual, even magnets would be a cool idea. You could thread magnets into these little holes, you know, like like rig wheels magnets and stuff, um, and like magnet base it to it. Um, so that would be cool. I might send uh, Noah some feedback and, you know, for possibly some other accessories and stuff. Or it's all quarter 20, so you could even in theory make your own. If you got some really, you know, strong magnets that were maybe rubberized so they wouldn't damage anything, um, then you could put like a washer and a screw through them so that you can thread them to this and do your own kind of thing. A um, lot of different DIY solutions you can come up with for this, um, but that's a good idea uh, to be able to mount it to other platforms and stuff there. But you have the flexibility since it's all standard, you know, hardware mounting that you could make your own solutions if you really wanted to. Now, how much you trust your own solutions, I don't know, um, but you could really get creative with it, which is the beauty of uh, the platypod. I mean, it's it's a plate. It's it, it's a really versatile, really well made plate. So that's awesome. Um... New Legend Pictures. Uh, I just joined. Still not a hundred percent sure where and when to use it. Use it wherever and whenever you want. Uh, it is. Uh, you'll have to look back to see everything we've looked at now. But basically, it is a tripod without legs. Unless you have the spikes, then it technically does have legs. Uh, but it's a mounting platform and you can add a ball head or whatever you want to it and uh, and be off and running. So let's, I mean, if you take a look at this, let me get these guys out of the way. You know, you take it, this is the Ultra. I've got the Manfrotto on there. Let's take a camera, lock my GH5 on here. Boom, should have framed up a little bit more, but there you go. That's stable even just on the Ultra, it's not going anywhere. So for cameras of this size, that's great. Um, and there are plenty of other things you can mount to it. But let's continue, take a peek at our chat real quick and then we'll uh, continue on here because I want to check out that accessory kit because there's some cool options in there. Um, Speaking of uh, weight and cine lenses, how much on average do the Schneiders weigh? I saw in the last video that you put on the Black Magic without a, uh, a ring holder. Uh, can you run around handheld with these lenses? Um, he's referring to my, I actually have one right here, my Schneider cinema lenses. Um, I'd have to look up the exact weight on them. Um, they are EF mount, which is a pretty strong mount, so I'm pretty comfortable with the weight without uh, lens support because these are not as heavy as most cinema lenses, but I'll have to look into that. And I actually have been looking into some lens support solutions because I know it's kind of a no-no. Uh, last thing I want to do is damage my mount. Um, but back to the platypods. Overhead camera, hang in there. So there we go. Platypod Max, Platypod Ultra, 
Manfrotto 496. This is just a Giados plate here, uh, but very cool stuff. Next, I'm going to take a peek at, let's get this out of the way. Oh, don't lose that. Set these guys here. This guy. So he, uh, Noah sent me really the full kit, the full lineup of what they got going on. So this is the Platypod multi accessory kit. Um, and so this has some extra things that are really going to make you be able to do anything with uh, your Platypods. So let's open this guy up. Let me zoom out a little bit. We're a little, little tight there. There we go. Get that off of there. So it's got a list of what it includes, but we're going to go through it right now. So we've got that guy right there. We've got that guy right there. We've got that guy right there. That guy right there. Okay, so let's get the max bag out of the shot. Let's get that out of there. So this is the accessory kit, and this is what comes in it. So it comes with a larger strap, uh, presumably you know, be a great fit with the Max, but can also be used with the Ultra. It is a longer strap. It is a 36 inch strap, uh, as opposed to the smaller one that comes with the, uh, with the Ultra. So you can get around some thicker posts. I could see you getting around some trees and stuff like that. So you've got that guy in there. Of course, I'm not folding it up correctly. Let's get it out of the way. You have this right here, because as you guys have probably noticed, uh, the thread that comes on these is a 3 8 um, So most ball heads and stuff will take 3 8 because it's a little bit sturdier of a connection. But if you have something that's quarter 20, uh, they come, it comes with this adapter in the accessory kit. So this is a flat uh, disc with a quarter 20 male on this side and 3 8 female on this side. It's knurled along the outside here so that you can easily throw that on there and now you can slap a quarter 20 accessory or quarter 20 ball head onto there. And with that knurling you can get it pretty tight and you can also get it off pretty easily. So that is handy. Let me leave that off because we're going to be using that more. Um, it comes with this little bag that they say is just in a, you know, a bag for the accessories to fit into. Let's get this out of here. That came with the Ultra. But I found actually that this bag seems like it should have come with the Ultra because the Ultra fits in it perfectly. And so you could fit that in there, you could fit your little spike feet in there and all that stuff and so put it in a nice little bag just like the Max came with. Um, but it comes in the accessory kit. Let's get that out of here. I got stuff all over the place now. Then it came with this and what this is is this is almost like one of those phone uh, holders for your car, you know, the pads that are like slightly sticky. I don't want to fully take it out because I don't know how sticky it is. So it's not actually like a glue adhesive, but it's just a sticky, it's, it's got a sticky surface, not leaving any residue type sticky. But when you lay it on uh, a car hood or something smooth that you're worried about this like slipping off of if you don't want to use the feet, you take this set it down and it's got a lot of grip on this side as well. You set that on there, then you can set your platypod on top and with the weight and the friction and the slight stickiness, it's going to hold it in place. Wow, I just moved my whole table and cut out my camera. Um, so it comes with that. Not sure how useful I'll really find this. Um, I never even use these with cell phones. You usually see these with cell phones, you know, people slap them on their dashboard and they can just set their phone on there and it holds it. But it comes with one of those. And then this one is really cool. This is one of my favorite accessories. What do they call this guy? They had a name for it. They call it the spigot. And what it is, is it is a baby pin. Um, so for if you guys are familiar with light stands, uh, otherwise known as a 5 8 uh, pin, um, this is an adapter with 3 8 at the bottom so that you can mount lights onto this. And I want to show you guys that right now. Let's go to camera two. This thing's freaking cool. Because I can take this spigot, add it on there, and now I have a mounting spot for any of my lights. And it's got a quarter 20 in top here if you wanted to put something in that way. But now I could take this plate, 
I could screw it to a wall, I can strap it to a tree, and I can mount anything that takes a baby pin onto this. Uh, so let's check this out. I've got it on the Max right now. So here it is. Let's, uh, let's put something on it. So I'm going to take this old guy right here. This is pretty beefy. This is an old 650. Looks like an Ari, but it's actually a knockoff from eBay from way back in the day when I got started and didn't have the money for a real kit, but needed some tungsten lights. But anyway, we're going to go ahead, if you guys will forgive me for buying knockoff Chinese lights, let me go right here and we'll set this guy on there, see, onto the baby pin. Thread it, tighten it down just like any other light. <laughs> Look at our overhead. And there you go, that guy's on there. Uh, here we go, this is even better. So yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on the Platypod Max using that, uh, that spigot, that baby pin plate. Now, of course, you don't have to do huge lights like this, um, but you could do small LED lights, you could do flashes, you could do whatever fits onto a, a, a light stand baby 5 8 pin like that. Uh, you can fit that on there. Let me get this guy out of here so that we can actually see stuff in our shot. Um, there we go. Get off of there and put this back as our set piece up here because I'm too embarrassed and ashamed to actually use them. <laughs> but anyway, so that's super cool. Um, so a lot of different options for that. So now you can really mount uh, a pin anywhere you want. Like I said, you can drill it into something. Uh, you can strap it to something if you're not allowed to drill it to something. Uh, or you can just rest it on the ground like it's a super super low boy light stand um, with that right there. So let's see what we've got in the, the chat. Um, Trevor's saying you could actually use the 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter to mount the Platypod Ultra on top of the Max, basically using the Max as a huge foot. Yeah, that's true. You want to try that real quick? I'm not sure why you would do that, but he's saying you could take, let me get the spigot off. <laughs> he's saying you could take the Max put the uh, adapter on it, and then using the quarter 20 tripod mount hole there, you can thread the Ultra onto it and use it like a big foot. Uh, not quite sure what advantage you get out of that. I mean, at this point, I'd probably just mount something directly to <laughs> to the max, but yeah, see, you can. It's just, it's giant metal Legos, guys. You can do whatever you want with it and mount whatever you need, wherever you need. I've got pieces all over the place of this. Uh, let me just cap these real quick. All right, so back to one. Uh, where were we in the chat? Um, so uh, Furworks is saying a baby pin, brilliant. Yeah, this is by far, uh, my favorite of the accessories. This thing's freaking cool. Uh, just, you know, a, a simple little baby pin. And I'm sure you can probably actually find accessories like this because I did see a comment um, that they should sell this pin separately. I bet you you can probably find a, uh, a baby pin or 5 8 pin like this with 3 8 threading at the bottom. Um, and you could probably pick that up and pop it on there if you didn't want the whole rest of the accessory kit. Now there is some other handy stuff in that accessory kit, so it might be worth picking up. And let me check really quick actually for you guys too, <coughs> pardon me, what the accessory kit costs. Uh, so the accessory kit is 30 bucks. Um, so you know, you might find a pin like this on B&H for 10. Um, and you just gotta sort of, that's just speculation, I don't know that you can, um, but you'd wanna sort of weigh it and against like, all right, do I wanna pay 20 more bucks, get the nice bag, get this other adapter, get the larger strap, you know, you might get a lot more versatility out of that. Um, but let's, uh, actually, let's take a look and see if you can find a pin. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna pull up B&H. Let me, uh, let me share my screen with you guys so that you can see this. Um, so that's why I love live, is that you guys give me ideas on the fly. Uh, so let's go to main screen. 
here we go. Let's go to B&H Photo Video. Check out, we'll be available. Yeah, I know you guys are closed. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, let's go to baby pin three eights. So it might be, okay, let's see here. Okay, so this is male threaded to three eighths baby pin. So you could potentially use that and thread it into the three eighths hole um, on the. Uh, yeah, not sure if there's a. So let's try baby pin three eighths female. Baby pin adapter five eighths to the, no, so that's stepping. That's a step down kind of thing. But anyway, you could do some searching out there. I just wanted to take a uh, a quick peek, but I'm sure you could probably find something if that is the only thing that you were really interested in is that pin because yeah, that is a freaking brilliant um, idea right there. And I'm sure you could find something. What I was mentioning before, um, if we take a top down, if you wanted to pick up that other pin, you know there is always. 3 8 female right here. So you've got 3 8 male right here, but you can thread in uh, 3 8 female or 3 8 male right there and you could have the pin right there. Um, so lots of different ways to use this thing, even beyond the Platypod branded um, system, which is really, really freaking cool. And you know, you can put giant lights on this. I put that old 650 on there and that thing is all metal. It's heavy, it's large, and it was on here and it was stable. Um, you know, with the, with the Max, of course, it probably would have been a little precarious if we were trying to do it with the, with the Ultra here. Um, but you know, that's just awesome uh, that you can do that. You can slap lights and whatever else. And so if you had a few of these in your bag, uh, toss them in there, they take up almost no space and you're good to go. Um, let's take a peek at our chat one more time and then actually we'll, we'll make some, we'll clean up this mess and I'll show you guys exactly how I will be carrying them. Uh, so let's see here. Spigot, um, Trevor's saying, do you know of any tools you can use in the field uh, for torquing things without marring the surface? Something like a uh, jaw pipe wrench with uh, protection over those gnarly teeth. Uh, for tightening stuff down without damaging stuff like a, like a threaded knob. Depends how, how tight you really want to get it. People will use like channel locks or like pliers or something, but you might want to go and just get one of those like rubber, um, rubber pads that are used. They sell them as like jar openers. You know, it's just, it's just a rubber thing to give you more padding. Um, but you could put that over, um, over whatever you're trying to twist and then use channel locks or pliers or something to torque it down without marring it up. That would be my best guess is just to put some sort of rubber or protective surface between what you're clamping onto and, um, and your tool is, uh, would be my suggestion for that. Sorry, a little off topic, but I guess not like rigging and grip and all that kind of stuff. But uh, screwing these plates on the wall and using uh, the spigot might help with a lot of space. Yeah, Rumani's saying like, yeah, you walk into a space and uh, you can, they, they make wall plates. I actually use uh, some Matthews and Impact wall plates to mount some of my lights to the walls in here because I hate having light stands take up precious floor space because it's not a huge basement studio. Um, but I have to buy those specialized plates and attach them to it. Something like this, I can put a wall plate anywhere with that baby pin. Um, that's just freaking cool. Um, yeah, the baby pin is a, is a big win. Um, so let's take a look. Let's pack all this up as if I were going to take it with me. So we've got pieces all over the place here. Let me get my wide nice and wide. Okay. Uh -huh. So here we go. Wide is nice and wide. You can see I've made an absolute mess of all the stuff over here. So let's pack it up. So obviously I don't need the box. I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to get rid of all the boxes. Not get rid of them because they're actually pretty nice. Um, I'm a sucker. I actually hang on to way too many product boxes. Like I have a closet stacked full of them. I don't know what my thought is. Like 
Am I going to resell them and be like, ooh, comes in original box? Nobody cares. So <laughs> I'm going to set it down. Like they're collectibles or something, right? Um, GH5, you can hang out over there. This is a piece of the box. Okay. This uh, would travel with me. This is my 496 ball head. Love this ball head. Super heavy duty. Can hold a ridiculous amount of weight. Link is in the description down below if you do want to pick that up. Doesn't come with this, uh, this plate here. This is just a plate that I have that matches all of my uh, camera plates. I put the same tripod system on absolutely everything. So anyway, little tangent there. Okay, so let's pack some stuff up. So let's start with our Ultra. I want to take my Ultra here and I want to put him in this pouch that came with the accessory kit. I want to make sure I get his feet in there. I might actually take the carabiner off of this and shove that in there too, just in case. So shove that guy in there, fits nicely. Let's get the carabiner in there. Um, and then I have the option of putting any of these other accessories that I really want in there. This guy, I think I'd like to get in there. I wonder if I can fit that in there. I want to keep it in the plastic because I have a feeling that sort of tacky uh, rubber would pick up the fabric of this bag because the bag is nice and soft and would kind of make it uh, lose its grip a little bit. So I want to keep it in the plastic until I actually use it. But there we go. There's my Ultra, Platypod Ultra packed up right there. Here's my Max. Max is freaking awesome because it comes with its uh, storage already built right into it, right on it right there. Oops, forgot this for my, uh, for my Ultra. How the heck do I pack this up? Ah, okay. So I'm gonna put this in with the Ultra too because I feel like this strap is definitely more tuned to the Ultra. But let's take that shove it in there. Okay, now my Ultra is packed and good to go. Look at that. I've got a camera system. <laughs> As I say, look at that. And the camera feed cuts out. There we go. Uh, I've got a camera system ready to go right there. It's actually about the size of my camera uh, if I'm using the GH5. So that's awesome. Let's get these out of here. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff I'm going to put in the Max. So the Platypod Max does come with its own bag. So I want to take this guy and I want to shove him into there. Really sorry about the overhead camera problems, guys. I have a feeling uh, my HDMI cable that I have running all the way along the ceiling is kind of going dead. It's kind of a long run and HDMI is not good for that. So um, I definitely want my baby pin in here with the Max. Uh, I'll probably toss this guy in here with the Max as well. And then we have this guy, the strap. I'll roll the strap up. This one seems to be a bit more suited to the Max. So I'll take him and I'll slide him in there too. And there we go. My Platypod Max is packed up. Now, you know what? wonder if this will work. Boom. Look at that. Now I've got my entire Platypod system in this bag. In that bag right there. All the accessory kit, Platypod Max, Platypod Ultra, all in one very nice little bag. All right, so there we go. Uh, I think that was a good look at the Platypod system. Huge thanks to, uh, to Noah for um, hanging out with me at NAB for a little bit and chatting. Um, and then also for sending this over, not only for me to check out, but to share with you guys. So let's uh, hang out for a little bit, take a peek in the chat, see if you guys have any remaining questions, either about the Platypod or about anything else. I can entertain a few other questions in these last few minutes that we have and, uh, and see what, uh, what you guys got on your minds right now. So let's see what we've got. Um, so Furwork said, it's basically a beaver board uh, with the pin on it. Uh, but a tiny portable one. I'm not familiar with a beaver board, but I'll have to take uh, your word for it for right now. Um, so I'm talking about spelling of spigot. Um, then we had the question about tools for torquing stuff down, screwing into the wall. Uh, Trevor's saying, I think the best case scenario for me would be to screw a, a few of the ultras high up on studs or in the ceiling to quickly mount overhead lighting, eliminate rigging showing up in the shots. Um, like the Aperture LS Mini 20Ds, you could put them anywhere. Yeah, very true. So there's, 
there's three screw holes in the Ultra, and there's uh, four in the Max. If you wanted to, like I said, if you're in a location where you are allowed to drill into overhead beams or something like that, and they have a pretty large opening in them. Um, let me actually, I know I put it all out. So they have a pretty decent size opening in them. So you could put a pretty heavy duty bolt through that and really get them secure. And you're absolutely right. If you wanted to mount them quickly overhead and put those, uh, those spigots, the 5 8 baby pin on there um, and quickly mount lights like the Aperture Mini 20s or maybe even some panels. I mean, it's gonna be, depending on how deep your screws are, it could be super, super secure because this plate is not your weak point. Uh, your weakest point is going to be the screws into whatever you're uh, screwing into. You know, if it's drywall or something, you obviously want to be more cautious. If it's a big, solid hardwood and you've got a big old bolt going through there, I mean, it's going to be secure. Let's take a close look at the size of these holes. Uh, so I can't actually measure right now, but I just wanted to show you that you can put some you know, you can put more than just a, a little wood screw through there. So that's a quarter 20 thread right there. And so this is even a little bit bigger. That might even be almost 3 8 sized. Um, so you can put a heck of a screw or a heck of a bolt through that. Um, and then since they are uh, tapered, uh, beveled here, you can get a, a nice flat seat on it if you get the sort of uh, tapered uh, screws to go in there and you've got a nice bite to it. It's got a lot of surface to hold on to to pin this thing to whatever you're, you're drilling into. Uh, like I said, you're not always in a place where you can be drilling into stuff, uh, but then you have options to just uh, strap it to it. Um, or do whatever else you need to do. So pretty cool, pretty versatile for just a small um, little plate. I uh, really like that. Um, and it looks like that is about it for our questions. Uh, and we are about right on time. We're just past about the 50 minute mark and we usually try and keep these from going over an hour. You know, that's a long time to sit here and hear me talk and hang out and whatnot. But for those of you who did come and hang out today, thank you so, so much. It's so good to be back uh, in the studio doing the live show. It had been, <clears throat> think like four or five weeks since I had had a live show and I did miss you guys. I felt really bad. Um, it's just, you know, everything has just been work, 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 travel, 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 and it just made it really difficult. Um, that being said, I am back, but not quite fully back yet. Uh, because I am leaving for San Francisco on Tuesday and I will not be back until after the following Saturday. So next Saturday, we won't have a show because I will be shooting in San Francisco. But the week after that, we will be back. Uh, so I do still have some travel that's going to interrupt things, but I'm going to make sure uh, to keep you guys updated. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you click that notification bell because that's going to let you know the moment that I go live or that I post some content because I've been working on a bunch of content I want to get out in my absence while I'm gone. Um, and so hang on to that. And um, I think, I'm not 100% sure, somebody was asking earlier in the show um, what, uh, what, next, what the next live show will be. And so I am thinking, I've been trying out some new editing surfaces upstairs, control surfaces in my edit suite. So I think we're gonna take a look at the new control surfaces that I'm using to edit in Adobe Premiere um, and kind of take a look at what they can do and how I like them. I'm not certain, but I'm, Call it 80% certain that that's going to be the topic of the show. Not next week, because we won't be here, but the following Saturday. And like I said, if it's too much for you to mark your calendar and worry about when the show will be or not, easiest way to not worry.